hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to another Pass HC exam question videos. This exam question comes from the chromosomes and inheritance chapter of the Blueprint of Life module. While doing a second, I read the question. Once I read the question, you have about five seconds to pause the video. Once I've paused the video, once you have paused the video, yeah, attempt the question and then press play when you're done. The question itself is as part of an independent research project, a student studied a genetic condition suffered by members of his family. The student wrote the following summary. I am male and I have the condition. My mother does not have the condition. My father and his brother have the condition. My father's sister and my father's mother do not have the condition. My father's father has the condition. A. Construct a pedigree of his family. And that was worth three marks. B. Why are diagrams such as pedigrees useful in analyzing data? That was worth one mark. And C. Students made the following conclusions from his study. As only males have the condition, it must be sex linked. It must be a sex linked genetic condition. Assess the validity of the student's conclusion and pro provide support for your assessment. And that was worth two marks. Alright, so when you're ready, press pause and attempt the question. Welcome back. Alright, so first thing we should do is because we have to construct a pedigree tree, we should actually have the different legends. So we say this is an unaffected female. So unaffected female. So a circle which is not colored in is an unaffected female. A circle which is colored in is a affected female. So this is has has the condition. This is an affected female. If we have a square which is not called in, that means a unaffected male. And if we have a square which is colored in, that means we have a affected male. That's what you should do always in the beginning, you should have that. Then we need to actually look at data and see what we can figure out. When we construct a pedigree tree, we should always start at the most distant relationship to the person. So the person itself is that student. So I am a male and I have the condition. This should be the last one in the pedigree tree. We're looking at the furthest away. So we've got, he, he has a father and the father is also has a father's father. So this guy, my father's father has the condition. This is the grandpa, or the grandfather, grandfather. And we also have the mother given. My mother doesn't have the condition. My father and his brother have to give my father's sister and my father's mother. So we've got the father's mother, which is the student's grandmother. And she does not have the condition, but the father has the condition. That's what we'll do first. That's the first pedigree of that we'll do. So she, this is the grandmom drawing. And she was married to the grandpa. And the grandpa had the condition. So I'm just going to say, right, grand. Ma and Grandpa. Now they had babies and they had obviously father. So the father has the condition. It says my father and his brother have the condition. So both the male offspring of that couple had the condition. But my father's sister does not have the condition. So this is next. This is the related. So we have the sister one of the brothers who has the condition and the father who has the condition. So this would be father, sister, father, sister. This would be father's brother. And this would be the father. Now the father has a child with the mother and the mother does, the mother of the student does not have the condition. So we do a marriage line because they are a couple and we keep that circle like that because they're, she's not affected. And this is the mother. 
and they have a child and child is the student and student is affected. It says I am male and I have the condition. So this is the student. So for doing this you will get all of your marks. Three marks out of three. And the points would be just arranged that if you've done the correct and affected and unaffected, you've gotten the inheritance line and the marriage line correct and all that kind of stuff would get your marks. That was the first part. Second part, why are diagrams such as pedigrees useful in, in analyzing data? So why do we use these diagrams as opposed to only looking at this information? So just imagine if you're only looking at this information, why is that not as good as having this pedigree tree? Well, the pedigree tree is a, it's a visual medium, so visual, so we can just look at it, and it just simplifies all the data as well, so it simplifies it. And those two things allow us to make links much more better than if we just had to look at all the text purely. So that's what I wrote. I mean, it's only worth one mark, so you just have to give one or two reasons. Pedigree trees display all the data in a visual and easy to digest way. This allows for links to be links between data to be quickly established. That's at all I mentioned that you know if you have these these trees, it's an easier way to gather all the digest information than if you have only text. Yeah, just for mentioning that you get a mark as well. That's only worth one mark. The last part was the student made the following conclusion from a study. As only males have the condition, it must be a sex linked genetic condition. The question is assess the validity of the student's conclusion and provide support for your assessment. So we need to say is that st statement correct? And if so, we need to provide support. Even if we say it's not correct, we still need to provide support as well. All right, so what I wrote is, yep, it is correct, and the reasons why I'll go for those now. This conclusion is a valid one. That was my statement. The mother and grandmother of the student must be carriers of the condition. So they must be carriers of the condition, as they have one affected X chromosome, which they passed on to the affected sons, and one unaffected X chromosome. And we know they must be carriers because, for example, here, the males all got the... The males all have the condition, but they must have gotten the Y chromosome from the father. So they must have gotten the Y chromosome from the father. And we know the Y chromosome doesn't code for much. So they must have gotten a affected X chromosome. Must have come from the mother. And if you, This is XY. This is XX. And yeah, you should, they only get half, so they'll get the Y from the father if it's a boy. And they'll get either one of those X's from the mother. And one of those X's must be affected because... Both the father and the son were affected, so that means that this female and this female are both carriers of disease. And so we know that the females are carriers of disease, but they don't have the disease, whereas the males all have the disease. So all the males have the condition, as they receive one recessive X chromosome from their mother, but receive the Y chromosome from their father, which does not code for the condition. So this Y chromosome is more or less useless. It doesn't code for anything in particular. Which means they, they which means so what this next part is the important part. The recessive the recessive X chromosome is expressed in the phenotype. So it has that recessive X chromosome for the condition. So I'm gonna write a small C as opposed to a big C. So it's recessive. And because they're male, they have one so one X and one Y. And because they only have one X and this one X is recessive, that means they have the condition. Whereas the females can have one capital and one small. So they have one dominant, one recessive. So they're carriers, but they don't have the disease. But that's all proof that this actual problem is carried on your, X, your sex chromosomes. Because... Only your sex chromosomes have that added factor with the Y chromosome not coding for anything. All the other ones don't have that. So I get you two marks just stating those observations that the females all had it, and that's because they all got the recessive X chromosomes from the mother, and the females were all carriers, but they did not have the condition because they received one X chromosome from the father and one X chromosome from the mother, and they received the healthy one from the father, which the boys didn't get. Where does the question come from? It came from these two dot points. So students will solve problems involving co-dominance and sex linkage. We just had a sex linkage problem. 
but we also were asked to perform an investigation to construct pedigree of family trees. So A was pedigree and family trees, and the rest was from the sex linkage problems. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.